Hi guys and welcome to this bullet journal plan with me video. If you're new here, my name is Anna and today it's time to set our journals for August. This monthly theme will be a little bit more artsy. I might have gotten a little bit carried away with the decorations, so we'll have a lot of drawing and some gold accents as well. And I'm so, so excited to share this thing with you. So now let's flip to the next empty page of our journals and we'll start today with the August cover, which will be this whole spread wide drawing. I really felt like doing a lot of line art this month and we're gonna draw quite a lot using the basic micron black pens. And on this cover spread, I wanted to draw something a little bit more fantasy related and kind of wanted to just make this whole spread look super cool. So I started everything from this legless floating dragon. This was definitely inspired by Haku from Spirited Away, if you're familiar with that Jubilee movie. But actually this theme overall won't have any more dragons or Ghibli references after this one. I know this kind of style is not for everyone, which is why I draw something like this quite rarely on my channel. Actually, I think my main inspiration this month was the famous woodblock print called the Great Wave of Kanagawa. I'm sure many of you have seen it before. So mainly, I just wanted to create something a little bit more artsy using a lot of blue tones and complement them with some neutral colors as well. But as always, I like to include some different elements to my themes because I don't like to draw the same thing over and over. So that's why this dragon ended up on the cover spread. But yeah, I started the whole thing from a pencil sketch as I usually do. And here I was just trying to figure out a nice posture for the dragon. I usually really take my time with this step because I want all the lines to be very clear before going in with the black pens, just because you can't erase those lines anymore and having a good sketch underneath makes the inking process much less nerve-wracking. But then after the initial pencil sketch, you can see me starting to draw the outlines over with my black micron. I usually only focus on the outlines and other necessary lines in this point because you can always add more details later after the coloring phase. So I often try to kind of hold back a little bit in this point. I had a short dragon drawing phase when I was younger. And I would say that even if dragons or other fantasy creatures are not your thing, there is something so enjoyable about drawing them. There are no rules or any kind of mold you need to recreate, which was something I really enjoyed here actually. I feel like I haven't drawn anything quite like this in a while. So for example, you probably noticed that I tried to add some sort of legs here at first, but then it just wasn't working out and I decided that my dragon won't have legs. That's something you can't decide that often. <laughs> Anyway, before we will start with the coloring, I jumped to the rest of this page and this was actually where my struggles kind of started with this cover page. So I knew I wanted some sort of ocean and waves to the bottom and then I wanted to add some swirl patterns to the sky but I especially struggled with the waves here at the bottom. I didn't really know what kind of style to go for. I didn't want to create anything too realistic and also knew that it would be a little bit difficult to paint anything super complicated directly onto the notebook paper. So in this point, I just added some lines here and this will actually change quite a lot when we get to the coloring. But now that I had some basic lines here in place, it was time to whip out the watercolors, which I used for the coloring quite a lot this month. So I started the coloring from the dragon again, and I actually went with a very minimal coloring technique here. So you can see how I'm kind of starting from just the basic color layers. I'm not trying to add any details or anything like that in this point. And then after these layers have tried, I started to add some shadows and dimension by adding a little bit darker color on top of the ones we just created. 
When you take a drawing like this step by step, it's really not as complicated as it might look like. I think paintings like these often look much more complicated than it needs to be, especially when it comes to the coloring part. And again, I was enjoying the freedom here of choosing whatever colors I wanted. And I wanted this dragon to match the rest of the ocean theme. So I went with these different blue tones. After that, I started to add some color to the waves. And I tried to almost create these layers that I will later intensify with some black line work as well. I tried to add a lot of darkness, especially to the lowest parts of the waves, and then also left some white areas in this point, because I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do here yet. You might also notice that I will add some clips to the corners, because using watercolors like this on the whole page will definitely make it wrinkle, and I think the clips do prevent that a little bit. Then I moved on and added some neutral, misty colors to these whirls in the sky. I wanted these to be much lighter than the other details on this page, and then I also intensified the outlines with my black pen. But then we come to probably my favorite part of this page. So I wanted to create this big moon behind the dragon and decided to use my shimmery paint for this. This color is called Moon Gold, so it has that slight silvery or almost champagne-y tone to it, and I thought it went so well with the other neutral colors in this theme. I almost used pure gold, but later I was so happy I decided to go with this instead. But yeah, so I added the gold moon and also decided to add this shimmer paint to the waves a little bit because I thought it would look a little bit unbalanced if the moon was the only shimmery part of this page. If you don't have shimmer paints like these, there are also other ways to create a very similar effect like using regular foil or some metallic pens. But if you've been looking for some shimmer paints, I've been so happy with these ones. The pearl shift is very strong and I also see other creators using these same paints. So I'm not the only one who's into them. And if you're wondering, all the tools I'm using are listed and linked to the description as always. So you can find all the details from there. But then as I mentioned earlier, I started to add some finishing touches to this spread by adding some lines to the ocean and also intensifying the outlines of the dragon a little bit and the swirl pattern in the sky. And then I also wrote the August title to the top corner of the page. And you might notice that I decided to try out a little bit different font this time. I thought this a little bit thicker and less cursive font suit the cooler style of these pages a little bit better than the wispy romantic font I often use in my videos. And as always, for those of you who are interested, this theme will be available as a digital download on my online shop and in case you missed it I actually added many new stickers and bundles last month as well so if all of that is something you would be into I would be extremely grateful if you would take a look and for any of you washi tape lovers I also added this page on my online shop where you can now easily find both of the washi tape collections I've designed for the washi tape shop so that's new as well but now we are finally done with the cover spread. I feel like this was very different for me, but I actually liked it a lot. I feel like especially the gold details really elevated this spread. But now it's time to move on and next we will set up the monthly calendar spread. So I always like to have a bigger overview style calendar in my monthly themes. And we'll start here from the border I created around the calendar. We'll create a small pattern here, so I'm first showing you how it looks like with a pencil because I think it might be a little bit difficult to see all the details of it later. But after that, I actually started with the same gold paint and I used this as the background for the border. 
After the gold had dried, I started to draw the pattern on top and it took me a while to figure this one out. Eventually, I decided to outline the whole pattern with black and then I just repeated the same half circles to the whole thing. The corners were a little bit difficult because they didn't really work symmetrically with the pattern so I didn't spend too much time on them and just threw something to the corners. But then, when I finally had all the sides ready, I filled the calendar details, which were very simple this time. Each day here has 5 times 5 dot space, which will be more than enough for me to write out any plans in August. But after we have the calendar in the middle, now it's time to start working with the rest of this spread. I wasn't supposed to create anything too complicated here, but this was one of those spreads that definitely escalated while I was working on it. Anyway, my main idea was to create the great wave of Kanagawa style ocean to the bottom of this spread. This time I actually followed the original picture quite closely, so using a pencil first, I started to sketch out these waves. This was actually much more difficult and tedious than I anticipated. The waves had these very specific details and it was quite difficult to tell all the details and different layers apart here before we will add all the colors. I had to change some parts a little bit and also stretch out the whole picture because mine was much wider than the original. But when I finally had a good sketch down, I started to define all the main lines with the black pen. The pattern and shape of the waves was very interesting. I almost felt like I was drawing layers and layers of these tiny little claws or hands that are grabbing the boats that sank in the waves. I couldn't help but wonder if that was the idea behind the original painting. But now that we have this big mess of black details, it was finally time to start the coloring. And I actually chose a very different way to color this whole thing. I haven't really used my brush pens all that much in the recent setups, but I thought that would be a great way to color these waves. So I chose a lighter blue and then one darker blue, and these are the only pens I'm gonna use for the whole coloring process. With brush pens, if you go over the same area a few times, it will make the color darker, so you'll notice that I really used that to my advantage, especially with the darker blue. The color pattern in the waves was pretty specific. I tried to especially pay attention to the placement of the darkest shadows. But then when this was finally done, for some reason I got this idea to color the whole upper part of this spread as well. So I used this sand color brush pen and tried to create as straight and even lines as possible so that it created this almost panel look to the background of this spread. I still can't decide if I like this or not. I kind of wish I used a more grayish and lighter color here, but I ended up using this brush pen on the rest of the pages as well, so maybe it matched the whole theme. <laughs> this was also one of those months where I don't know if these pages went together at all. Like this was pretty different from the cover spread, but I think the underlying ocean theme with blues and the gold paint carried throughout all the pages. But yeah, I left this small empty space where I wrote the year 2021 in Japanese characters. And then I finished the page with an August title that I decided to write on this white sticker paper so that I got a nice white border on it. Before moving on to the next page, I still added some white dots to the ocean because I honestly forgot to do that earlier. But after that, we are finally done with this spread. Okay, next we will take a quick break from all the drawing and set up a monthly planning section. 
I started this with a bigger title and followed it with this little bit thicker font. I actually really liked how this look, which made me think that I should probably experiment with my fonts a little bit more. But then after adding a simple gold underline for the title, we can start working with this page. I chose these two colors here. This blue is from the Archer and Olive Cool Fall pen set. And then we have the same sand color brush pen. I must say that the whole color theme of this month is right up my alley. I really liked how all the different navy tones paired with the champagne gold. But anyway, when it comes to the actual content of this page, I realized that I completely forgot to make a third quarter planning page last month. So I decided that better late than never and used these two first sections exactly for that. So first we have this open space to write down any third quarter plans and then I will list the top three priorities for these whole three months. Then to the bottom of this page I left myself some room to write about my August expectations which is basically what I want to focus on during this month. Then let's move on to the next page where I used the same colors and this time I will use this top section for some long-term planning and this is basically some things that I already know will be coming in the end of the year that I slowly need to start to prepare myself for. So this is kind of a heads up for myself to consider what's coming. And then I divided the rest of this page into these four different sections, which will be for my weekly overview planning. But now that the whole planning spread is done, we are moving on to this set of decorations that will end up in the middle of these next pages. So I don't know where I got this idea, but I wanted to try to create a three layer Dutch door painting of some sort. This will take us some time, but I think the end result is definitely worth it. And you could easily just incorporate some of the drawings here without doing this whole thing. So I started by cutting these two pages and then we will start with the most inner drawing of these two blue fish. I started this again from a pencil sketch, but I'm gonna speed that part through here quite fast because you can see everything pretty well also in the inking process. And I think it often creates a more interesting end result if you use two different pen thickness. So I started with the size 05 micron that I used for the outlines and then I drew the inner lines with a thinner 01 pen. It just creates a little bit different look to the lines and I think it's an easy method to tell the outlines apart from all the other details. In general, I think from this whole monthly theme, I would say that this is definitely something you could try out even if you don't have that much drawing experience. I think the shape of these fish is quite straightforward and probably the most difficult part is to make the fins and tail look floaty. Paying attention to where the inner lines start and end definitely helps for that. And I feel like the more lines you draw overall, the less one singular line will stand out. But then when it comes to the coloring, I started with this lighter fish that will have this light grayish body and then darker fins. And I actually wanted to do it reverse for the second one. So we always have some kind of yin and yang action here. I was a little bit scared that the watercolors were going to play through the page, but at least I managed to avoid that this time. I also didn't set anything to the space behind these fish, but I might add something there later. Anyway, I didn't do anything too complicated with the coloring here. The only place where I tried to add some detail were these scale patterns in the body. And then you can see how I tried to create this almost ombre effect to the tail. So with this first fish, the ends were a little bit darker. And then with the second one, I tried to leave the ends of the tail the lightest part.
And after the painting part was done, I cut out this circle that will be all that's left from this inner painting. So now you can kind of see the three layer layout taking shape here. And next I decided to paint the outer pages that are actually the monthly planning page and then similar page on the other side. I wanted these outlines to just be super dark navy blue and to create a very opaque and even layer of that, I decided to use my gouache paints for this part. So I secured these outer edges with some washi tape and then tried my best to work with the dark paint. This part was so messy and I ended up getting the blue paint absolutely everywhere on my desk, including my fingers and clothes. You also might want to use some paper to secure the rest of your notebook because otherwise it's so easy to get the paint also to the other pages. I think the color here looks almost black on camera, but in person the color is definitely much more of this dark navy tone and I really like the look the gouache paints added for this part. But then let's move on again and now we are starting to set up the middle spread. So here I wanted to use a lot of gold and I ended up creating these gold swirl patterns that will make the fishies in the middle really stand out. This part was honestly quite tedious, not gonna lie. I was slightly losing my mind in this point because I had been filming for so long and this theme wasn't supposed to be this complicated. But now, later that everything's done, I'm super happy that I took the time because it was definitely quite special decoration, even though it has no functional purpose whatsoever. <laughs> So I was just painting here freehand and trying to be as careful as possible with this gold paint. But after these swirls were done and dried, the next step was to add the same navy blue to the circle in the middle. I was a little bit worried that this color will blend too much with the darker colors in the fish. So to avoid that, I left this small white border around them. And then the very final part of this whole decoration was to add these black outlines and inner swirls to the middle spread. I wasn't completely sure if I preferred this to the plain gold look, but at least this added some more details and definition here and definitely made the whole thing look a little bit more finished. But that's finally it for the three layer decoration. I'm super excited to hear what you guys think about this. Should I experiment with layouts like this more in my videos? But anyway, now it was time to move on again. And next we will set up the other outer page of this whole thing. So this hidden page here will be from my content calendar. This is always a page that I think it's not that helpful for many of you, but it's something that I really need in my setups. So I just added a simple title here, following pretty much the same style as in the monthly planning page. And then I just set up the same columns to both of these pages. But now it's finally time to move on in this setup. And next we will set up the first weekly layout of August. So I've been doing a little bit different weekly layouts for the past few months, but actually this time I wanted to go back to a super simple old school weekly spread. So I actually did one of these two weeks in one spreads. So I will squeeze one week on each of these pages. So the left side here will be for the daily task lists. I know it might look like I don't have much room here, but I really try to limit the amount of tasks I do on my daily to-do lists. Like having more than four things to do in one day is already too much in my opinion. And the things I write on my weekly pages are more work related. There are some things that I don't use my bullet journal for or because I honestly don't think I need it. So for me, the daily task lists are mainly for work stuff. But then on the right side, I have these two different sections. The first one will be for the main priorities of the week. So these will be the things that definitely need to get done. 
And then under that, I have this extra credit section, which will be the extra credit stuff. So things that I can do or start if I have the time. And then I usually like to leave some empty space for myself somewhere in this monthly layout. So this lower part here will just be an empty space for some random notes. Then I just did the exact same thing, but in mirror version to the other page. And now we have the first two weekly layouts of August ready to go. But after that, I will flip over one page that will be for the other two weeks. And then we will set the final spread in this whole monthly layout, which will be, of course, the monthly reflection spread. I started this from some simple decorations again. This will be super quick and easy. And I started with these swirl patterns. Because I thought that I had to somehow tie these pages together a little bit. And I think this helped to connect everything a little bit more to the cover spread. I added some grayish blue tone here again. And then I decided to add this gold border around this whole spread. If you have the time and patience, you could also create the same pattern here we did on the monthly calendar spread. But I was quite liking the plain look here. And I also felt like this whole theme definitely needed something a little bit more simple. Anyway, after our simple decorations are done, we can start with the actual content of this spread. So first I wrote this reflection title here again. And then I moved on to create these four different sections for these pages. So first I left myself some room to write what's on my mind. This is something I like to do after each month. This is a very nice open-ended question that still lets you review what was going on in the past month. Then under this one, I added something that has quickly become one of my favorite sections in my monthly layouts, which is this August favorite section. So here I can list some of my favorite things in August and you know, stuff like that. That's nice to remember and look back to. Then on the second page, I added this very simple successes and struggles section. And then the last section that will complete this whole monthly layout will be this open space to write about stuff I'm grateful for. And that finally finishes up this August layout. I know this was a pretty decoration, painting and drawing heavy month, but I really hope you guys got many new ideas out of it and enjoyed it nevertheless. I've also been doing these monthly painting tutorials outside of my regular bullet journal themes. And if you would like even more monthly painting stuff, I also now have the Patreon that is exactly for that. So go check it out if you're interested. And if this was your first time here on this channel, definitely also consider subscribing to stay tuned for all the upcoming videos. I think that's it for this month. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.